And this is not your grandma, great, great, great grandma's lice soap. Um, this will not strip the hide off of an elephant's hind end. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty gentle soap. Uh, we've used it for all of our babies, for our children, uh, who all have very sensitive skin. I'm talking ketchup breaks them out, and this stuff works awesome. Welcome to Built on Faith Homestead or Leaving Egypt, depending on which video platform you are watching this on. Down below, and if you're watching on YouTube, down below in the description box ought to be our link to our Leaving Egypt channel on Rumble. You're more than welcome to watch it. My name is Justin. My name is Melissa. This is Bobo. <laughs> the girls are sitting at the table coloring. And uh, we live in a little bitty tiny house, and we just do the best we can uh, to serve the Lord and to live a self-sustainable life. And we got a lot of work to do on both of those avenues. There's yes. no doubt about it. But in today's video, we are going to be making homemade soap dun, da, da, da. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> homemade lye soap and so if that's something you're interested in please stick around with us if you think to yourself you don't want lye in your soap i hate to be the bearer of bad news but there's lye in all soap that's what makes it soap yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll show you how to make your own homemade natural soap and get away from the store-bought craziness yes yes stick around with us <laughs> Today we are going to make oatmeal honey milk soap made from raw milk from our family milk cow Stella. Um, what I do is I use a little scale and I measure out about 10 ounces of raw milk and I put it in a little Ziploc baggie and we freeze it. And so whatever day you want to make your homemade soap. Um, you take this out and you let it thaw till it's kind of like a slushy, like partially still frozen, but uh, liquidy um, milk. Cause that's when you'll want to combine your lye and your milk, which I'll talk about here in just a minute. Do you, have, do you have to use milk or can you just use like water? So I used to use water if I didn't have the raw milk. Um, you can just use water instead of your milk. Cause that's all you're doing is replacing your water with your milk. So you can make water, or you can use water and still make soap, yes. but we like the way the milk soap feels the best, the right? milk, to me, makes it more creamier when it gets wet and you're um, gonna wash yourself off or whatever. It's more creamier and sudsy, I think. Um, and the raw milk has a lot of uh, vitamins and good stuff for your skin, so. And that's one thing, when you're making homemade soap, if you, especially if you use water, you need to not expect the suds you get from a store-bought soap. Yeah. You don't need suds to be clean, right? No. And you can't expect things uh, like that to be just like the store. Um, you don't want it to be just like the store. No. no. Um, and you know, you make it for your family and it makes it that much more special. So. That's right. All right, so my milk, it kind of looks like that. I don't know if you can see it real well. It's still kind of slushy. Looks like kind of partially frozen ice cream. Um, I'm gonna pour it into this bigger, um, Lucky. Purex Lucky. measuring dish. And get all that in there we can. Don't want to waste it. No. We do cry over spilled milk sometimes. Yes. Yes. Hand <laughs> milk or cow here. <laughs> all right. So we got this. Now I'm going to measure out with my scale. And you can use your lard that you render. Um, I just didn't have any right now. One of these days we hope to do more of that. But you use your scale, put Daddy. your pot on and get it measured to zero. Daddy. And then we're gonna measure out two pounds of lard into our pot to melt down on the stove. Daddy. Two pounds of fat. Yes. Hey, Bobo, we're trying to do a video. Could you be quiet, man? Daddy. Yeah, <laughs> you got your hat. Daddy. <laughs> he wants to be in it too. He wants to be in it too, huh? Okay. Two pounds. Two pounds of lard. Now we're going to take it to our stove and start melting it. All right, here's the dangerous, dangerous ingredient, right? Yep, this is our lye and we're gonna measure, I'm gonna tell you, so I don't have my gloves here, um, 
it's a good idea to wear gloves. <laughs> um, I've gotten it on my skin before and um, it will start to burn. So if you do feel that, you need to immediately wash your hands um, because it will burn your skin at this point. Yeah. So it's a good idea to do that. I just don't have my gloves, so I'm just gonna be really, really careful. So how much are you putting in here? 4.5 ounces. We buy our lye at some local Mennonite stores, um, not too far away from the house. Um, a lot of Mennonite stores will sell lye um, and your um, local hardware stores and stuff will too, only it'll be marketed probably for um, like drain cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it says 100% lye on the back for the ingredients, then it can be used to make soap. So now you're 4.6, right? Yes. Does that really matter? No, it doesn't. You said 4.5. I did. As long as you're pretty close, right? Yes. Is Even it like some of the milk I've measured out? It's been like a tad over. Sure. It's okay. You gotta remember guys, they made soap way before they had digital yes. scales. Yes. Right? Okay, we got that now. We always want to put our lye into your either water or milk, your liquid. Yes. Don't do it the other way around, it will I think I I've done some research and it will kind of cause a sort of like a bubbling explosion a little bit. Yes. Not like a boom explosion, but it will, I think, fizz out and stuff. So I've just never done that. So. <laughs> but this is going to, as we add the lye to our milk at this stage, it's going to heat this mixture up and get really, really hot. So that's why I have it on the stove top counter. And if your soap turns brown, kind of like this is starting to do, that's normal with raw milk soap. Yes. Um, that is a normal thing. You can see how the color's really changing on it. Yeah, and some of that fat, that's what that is. Yeah. Is gonna come to the top. It's really turning brown now. And this recipe um, is going to make about eight bars, I believe, is what it makes. It depends on what you're uh, what you're gonna pour it in to get harder. It kind of depends on what size you want your soap bars to be. That is, yeah. You just want to stir this till all that lies dissolved. You helping us make soap? Uh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So any commentary you're hearing in the background uh, is me trying to hold Bo because he is teething and grumpy. So I'm trying to hold him while we do this video. Huh, buddy? All right, we got our lot or our lot lie. Blah, <laughs> our lard melted and it's heated up. We turn it off. We're gonna get it off the burner. So these are both heated up. Now what we're gonna do is let them cool. So now with these mixtures, you take your lard, now that it's melted off the stove, let both of these cool. So they've both heated up. Now you're gonna let them cool till they're around 85 degrees. You want both of these to be about within 10 degrees of each other. And so usually I do this in the morning and then by the afternoon sometime, it'll be ready. I've got, I've done this so much, I've gotten where I can kind of tell by the color of like the lard um, when it's sort of ready. And that's when I check it. Um, I have this sort of thermometer. I just bought this one, but you can use like a regular, you know, cheaper candy, ther candy thermometer. Um, that's what I do. So whenever it's cooled back down, we'll come back to you guys and show you what to do next. If you're wondering why we're doing an inside video today, yesterday, if you caught our video on wild edibles, I was outside, it's pushing 70 degrees. Let me show you what it looks like today. This is today's beautiful weather. Yesterday, finding wild edibles that were greening up, and today, snow. While we were waiting on our soap to cool um, so that it can be all mixed up, we did thought, or we did think, we did thought, <laughs> we did think we would tell you guys real quick um, kind of our soap journey, I guess you'd say a little bit. 
Um, so making homemade soap was one of the first things that Melissa did as far as our self-reliance homesteading type thing, right? Yes. Right? And originally we were going to make goat milk soap and then we ended up getting a milk cow instead of milk goats. And so now we're just making it with cow's milk. Yes. And it works wonderfully. Mm -hmm. It does. It's awesome. We haven't bought soap, store-bought soap in years now yeah this is all we've time. used yep. we've had customers that will um they, they have kids that's got allergies and stuff that our soap's the only soap that they'll they'll use or homemade soap is the only mm -hmm. soap that they'll use anyway right because it works yeah. really good for us it has been really good to help supplement our income some mm -hmm. and it's been really good to um use as a bartering tool yeah yeah um we've traded it for rabbits and we have chickens and I can't think of anything else right off the bat, but a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, we have used it to barter with. Mm -hmm. uh, the rabbits is one that always gets me. We traded, uh, a lady got a hold of us and asked if we'd trade rabbits for soap and asked her kind of what she wanted to do and it ended up being she wanted to do one for one. So uh, we traded like five bars of soap for five rabbits or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. Which worked out great, right? Um, so it's something that you can do something you can resource if you got you know a way to get fat a way to get lard you can resource it yourself um and it, it just works really well you can even make your own lye if you are um that into it right well lye is just made from wood ash mm -hmm. um and you can make your own lye uh, i'm sure there's lots of videos on it on youtube um it is just a great way to start yeah without having and it's not it's not difficult just yeah. simple soap is not difficult you don't have to add all the different colorants and mm -mm. different smells. You can if you get better at it, but I wouldn't suggest starting there. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll catch up to you in a bit. Hey guys, we're back to our soap. It has cooled our mixture down here, the lard and the lime mixture. Um, once you've got that cooled, I went ahead and measured out about a quarter cup of raw honey um, and about a half a cup to a full cup of oats and I used my food processor or you can use like a ninja or something like that to I like to grind them up um, a little smaller consistency than the big oats I have used them and made them both ways and I like that the best um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix our soap now again I said before you dump your lye into your other mixture first never the other way around and it's the same way here we're gonna dump this into our lard mixture. That was the milk before. This is the color it turns with the lye, just so you know. When you're mixing, you want it to come to trace, and what that means is, um, the more you do it, you'll know, but whenever I dab my these things into the lard, uh, when we're mixing, and like you turn it off and you kind of dab it in there, it'll make lines kind of in the in the mixture and that will be what I mean when it comes to trace and this time we're adding oats and honey so you want it to be a thick trace I mean you want to have good lines that you're drawing into your soap because all your oats will settle to the bottom yes they will settle to the bottom and it won't turn out as good as you want it to no. so you want a very thick trace a lot of people will tell you you have to have an emulsifier to make soap only if you like YouTube videos on soap or something you don't have to have that I use this and it works just fine <laughs> <laughs> so here we go we're gonna dump our lime mixture into our lard kind of scrape some of that good stuff now I'm not gonna lie it doesn't look all that good right no. now <laughs> <laughs> Again, if you get any lye on your skin, immediately wash your hands for the area that you had it on. And now we will just mix it until it comes to that trace. Yes. And uh, we'll show you that here in just a minute. You can kind of see this. When I stick that in there, you see all them lines? That's pretty thick. So right now is the time to add our oats and honey into there. So I'm going to do the honey first. Get all that off. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Go ahead and lick it off. We all know I that's did. what you're gonna do. Uh huh. Delicious. And now we add our oats. into your soap and over here is our mold you can use uh, silicone soap molds but this works too as long as this is just some freezer paper or parchment paper that I put in here make sure the corners are folded down and we will dump our soap in here in just a second spatula or whatever it's called I'm not real sure <laughs> to scrape out the rest of it because a lot of it will actually stick to the sides don't want to waste any of it no. too much hard work goes into it yep If it's thick enough, sometimes you can do fun little swirls on top or whatever you want to do. And that's how you can make milk, oatmeal, honey soap for your family. When can you take it out of this mold? Um, to take it out of the mold, it probably has to sit for about 24 hours. Depends on kind of the temperature of your house. Just kind of set it in a cool, dark place. Um, if we're like wood stove cooking hot, yeah, it may take like 48 hours. And sometimes I'll touch the top of that with my finger a little bit and you will feel a difference like when it starts to harden. You um, will just take this freezer paper out of your box and I usually just set it on a cutting board to cut. That's when you will cut your bars. I just use a regular chopping knife. And then how long before you can use it? You have to let your soap cure for four to six weeks. So make sure you write down when you made it so you can calculate how long it sits because that's called the soapification That is process. the technical term, soapification. Yes, <laughs> and uh, that's when the lye will be able to be used on your body and not hurt your body after the four to six weeks. Yes. So when these are done, it'll still have this kind of pretty rich gold color when we pull it out of here. But then, how long have these been sitting? These will be ready in like a week or two, I think. So the ones with the oats, Melissa sprinkled some whole oats on top to Good. pretty them up. She's gonna do the same thing there. Um, so these are sitting, how long did you say, about three weeks? Yeah. They've been sitting about three weeks. You can see the color change in them. These are very big bars of soap. Um, I don't know if I got a good uh, maybe here's my hats. You can kind of tell how big those bars are. Um, very big bars of soap. Uh, we like to make big bars. They last a long time. When we sell them, people get their money's worth out of them uh, because we know uh, whenever we sell products, our whole point is to try to sell a good quality product at a price that people that don't make a lot of money uh, can afford. But these are some oatmeal honey soaps after they've been set in a few weeks. And uh, these are just regular milk soaps. No oats, no honey, just lye soap with milk. And this is not your grandma, great, great, great grandma's lye soap. Um, this will not strip the hide off of an elephant's hind end. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty gentle soap. Uh, we've used it for all of our babies, for our children, uh, who all have very sensitive skin. I'm talking ketchup breaks them out, and this stuff works awesome.